Here is the grammar that we'll use for lazy mo. It has numbers and arithmetic, functions and applications. Here are two examples. If we have a constant function that takes in its argument, ignores it, and just returns zero, and we apply that to an error expression that's adding a number to a function, we won't see the error because the value of this expression is just zero and that doesn't depend on the value of the argument. And then down below, if we have a function that returns its argument, then we will see the error because this argument expression has to be evaluated to figure out what's the value of x on the inside. One more example, we can write let, because again, let is a sugar for a function application. If we say let x equal an error expression and the let body is just the constant zero, then the value of this whole let is just zero. And we don't run into the error because we never asked for the value of x. Let's go back now to the lambda interpreter. So our goal is to start with hash length split without lazy, have the same language as our lambda interpreter, and this should be a lazy language. Right now it's not. And that means that a test case like this will fail. So we have let x equal an expression that will produce an error if we evaluate it, and then return to three, so ignore x. In a lazy language, this should just give us three. But if we run the test, we see a failure. So our job now is to make this test pass. We know that the test would pass if we just ran the interpreter and split lazy, but that's not what we want to do. We want to implement laziness directly. But it's useful to see why it works with split lazy. That's because in the application case, when we go to extend the environment, we have this call to interpret the argument. This call does not get evaluated right away in the lazy language. It gets delayed. If the argument n is never used, then this interpret call will never get evaluated and we won't see the error. So we want to do the same thing now, although we'll be using split eager. And the way to do that is explicitly delay the argument interpretation. We need to introduce the delay form, and then when we add the binding to the environment, we add a delayed interpretation of the argument, not just the argument. To implement delay, we introduce a new type, thunk. Thunk has one variant, a delay object, and that takes in an argument expression and an environment to use later on when interpreting the argument. Second, we update our bindings inside the environment to now bind fit names to thunks. And now there's just one more step. So since we delayed the argument when we inserted it into the environment, we'll need to change the lookup case. So when we see an identifier, look up from the environment and then force that thunk. So for force, we have quick helper function, unpack the delay, and then interpret using the environment on the inside. Now back to Dr. Racket. This is a lazy lambda interpreter, so we've got the same values as before in its enclosures. We add our thunk type, which has the delay variant. And the interpreter is just like we talked about. So the identifier case does a force after lookup, and the application case binds a delayed expression in the environment. If we go down below the test that was failing before, this test will pass. All right, because nothing depends on the value of x, we get no error. And if we change this to use x, then we see the error again. Success.